Hello everyone, this is H the Husky Husky here. I'm going to be casting game number two between gaming spawning over here on the center right side as our yellow Zerg. His opponent is going to be Kaiser, but much better known as Slayer's Boxer, probably the most famous StarCraft 2 player ever, as well as the most famous pro gamer of all time. And the only person that even comes close, at least in my mind, is Fatality from first-person shooters. But I don't know, man. I feel like Boxer has always had a way bigger following. I think, like, a couple of years ago, he had a fan page with over half a million followers. That is insane. So he is a great guy. I was able to watch the MLG Finals backstage with him. And he is so manner, so nice. And uh, his wife is extremely nice as well. So... I wish them only the best. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about gaming here. He is going to be doing the extractor trick to go ahead and get one extra supply while he waits for that overlord. And that just gets your drone a little bit earlier. And then you get the two drones to follow it up with. So a slight macro style here from our Zerg player. He is going to be looking to get out a wave of drones before getting out either a spawning pool or his hatchery. Which, uh, ooh, what do we got going on here from Boxer? He is going to be having his refinery before barracks. Which, that can really open up so many options. That can give you Banshees. That can give you really fast Blue Flame Hellions. That can give you uh, all sorts of things. But, it is going to be a little bit vulnerable to any sort of early rush. Which, right now, looks like gaming not interested. Got to be going ahead and expanding early versus the Emperor himself. Which, uh, is very interesting. Because, Boxer is known against Zerg for going crazy bunker rushes. He's done it in StarCraft 1 forever. He does it in StarCraft 2 as well. So, I mean, when he's known for that, it's a little bit ballsy to go against him like this. But I got to hand it to gaming. He's confident enough in his macro to be able to go like, well, I don't even need Zerglings in the early stage of the game. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this hatchery, which once he scouts the space, he's got to be happy with what he sees. He sees, you know, the barracks just now going down really delayed on that. He's got to know that there is a tech path on the way. He does see a Marine being produced right away, so Boxer wants to try and hide what's going on here. But this drone's going to know what's up. He's going to regenerate his HP for a little bit and be able to survive a little bit. He will spot the factory as well. That is not hidden at all. And this is going to tell gaming that there's no early Marine push, most likely. There is going to be tech, especially with the gas going down early. And Boxer is going to have a reactor on the way. I don't think that the drone will be able to spot the reactor, as it will most likely be Hellions. But uh, he, he has to know that Hellions are a threat. He has to know that Banshees are a threat. And he also knows that a three racks or something early, super early pressure like that is not a threat. So again, it's got to come down to gaming. Can he have the proper response? Will he have decent enough defense to hold off against it? Because you got to remember, this reactor and Hellions are going to be out in about a minute and a half. Maybe a little bit less, but regardless, those units can be knocking at his front door very soon. So he has to keep his composure, make sure he gets out the right units. But this is an opening that Zerg players are very used to going against. Usually it won't be this early of a refinery, which means the Hellions are going to be a tiny bit earlier. You can see the production. Oh, no, he's supply blocked. Oh, this is delaying the push. But every second that goes by, this push is getting a little bit later. There it goes. His supply depot was able to finish. So a slight blunder there by Boxer. Will buy the Zerg a little bit of time. This is time he does not know he has. And look at this. Boxer, once again, finding inventive ways to expand. I mean, in the first game, he had his barracks in the center of the map and was able to expand off that. This time, he's rushing towards getting out two Hellions so he can expand. That is one thing about Terran is that there are a lot of safe ways to expand. You just got to make sure they don't take you by surprise because there's only a couple of Hellions going to be defending for you. And if there's roaches or something knocking at your front door and you don't have the proper defense, you could be in a lot of trouble. It looks like these Hellions may beat the spine car. The Queen, though, is going to be on the ramp. And is the spine collar going to be completed? It looks like, no, the queen needs to stay on that ramp. You need to hold position there, babe, as you cannot let those Hellions slip past. The spine collar is completed. A second spine collar on the way. You can see that gaming is having a little bit of a difficult time finding out where to position his units to perfectly hold off versus these Hellions. And right now, yes, Boxer uh, had his attack held off, but that doesn't really matter because he was able to expand just off of four Hellions. And this does force our Zerg player to have to get out something other than Zerglings. Because if gaming tries to move out and do some damage with his Zerglings, that is not going to do much against Boxer unless he can somehow get a perfect surround on these Hellions, which you do have Zergling speed on the way. I almost said Zergling legs, but it's really more of a Zergling wings. And that does increase his chance of getting that surround. Blue Flame Hellion is on the way. He's going to try and bust up the ramp. The Queen, oh no, it does let him in. A huge mistake by gaming. He will take out two 
of the Hellions, but oh, this is such bad news, although the Blue Flame is not going to be done. So if he controls perfectly, he should be able to save a lot of his drones. Does lose one drone right here. The other Queens are nowhere in sight to clean this up, and the Hellions, I mean, you gotta remember, Queens do not do that much damage. There we go, gotta take out those Hellions, and the Speed Zergling should be able to finish off this one. But that is such a tense moment. It did delay mining quite heavily, and the worker count, quite frankly, is not good for our Zerg player. You can see that he made a lot of Zerglings to try and deal with those Hellions. May have very well overcompensated, but he may get lucky here. If he decides to attack this base, he could get a surround on this, and it could be all over if Boxer's control is abysmal. But Boxer has perfect positioning on the ramp. Look at that positioning. That is how you need to do it. The Zerglings are going to attempt to do a lot of damage, but the Hellion's going to get so many kills. Four kills on that Hellion, and it does look like Boxer will hold here. My god. So many Zerglings just melting away there. And I mean, honestly, if you look at this, the Zerg player, after losing all those Zerglings, is about equal. So he could have been okay if he didn't lose all those Zerglings, but the major problem is, is the amount of drones he has. He is just now catching up in the amount of drones, but he does have eight drones on the way, which is exactly what he needs to do. There's really never been a point in the games versus Boxer so far where he's had that awesome, healthy drone lead that he's needed. Boxer's been able to slow him down, slow him down, and during that time, get out a lot of units himself. So our Zerg player, if he can get the amount of drones he needs, which he does have five drones being produced right now, and just got his gas up and running, then maybe he'll be okay here. But you gotta remember, two base Terran versus two base Zerg, that's gonna be a comfortable position for a Terran player, unless the Zerg player can get a nice unit composition and set himself up for an early third. It does look like he's not gonna get an early third, but he will start working on destroying these rocks as his third base. This is what really sucks for a Zerg player, is you have to destroy either these rocks or destroy the rocks to get up to the right side, which it does really work out if you can de get these rocks destroyed. The timing of this, though, is going to be a little bit delayed because you got to remember that Gaming ended up losing all of those Zerglings rather than using them to destroy the rocks. Now, here comes another potential drop. It is going to be elevated up here. I believe the Overlord can spot this. He sees that there's Hellions on the ground as well as dropping inside the main base. And once again, it looks like Box are going to be putting on a lot of pressure. This is a lot of units, even mixing in two more Hellions. These Hellions do have the Blue Flame now, which is going to be tough for these Zerglings to deal with. The Queens need to make sure to keep each other alive with that Transfuse. These Queens do have enough energy to Transfuse one another. And are they going to, though? One Queen goes down. There's the Transfuse. The Zerglings need to do a lot of damage. These Banelings desperately want to hit those Hellions. They're not going to be able to, though. It does look like the Queen's going to try and interrupt the reinforcements by taking out the Medivac. Boxer will be able to save that Medivac, though. And now the drone line is going to be attacked here by these Hellions. It looks like the Zergling's positioning is not going to be good. At this point, he was trying to get out Mutalist. This is such a sick timing by Boxer. Just look at this. The Spire's almost done, and the Zerg player... Oh, my God! There goes all the drones. He needs to make sure to keep the few remaining drones he has alive. He is not able to do that, though. One more shot takes out two drones. And really, there's not a whole lot left. The, the Hellion down here able to lock this down as the drone count has been whittled down to eight. Yes, that is right. There's eight drones on the field. So unless these Mutalists can kill off Boxer by themselves, then this game is going to be absolutely over. The timing of that from Boxer was so good because gaming was like, okay, I'm going to two-base Muta. And Boxer says, okay, I'm going to hit you right when your Spire finishes so you don't have any Mutalists for defense. Your drones are scurrying around and dying. So a phenomenal raid there by Boxer. And that was just really good. I feel like there's a lot of SCVs following. One of the, yeah, one of these mules has like five SCVs following it. So that is hurting his economy. But after, you know, you whittle your opponents down to eight drones, I feel like, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot they can really do. So the Mutalists are on the field. But guess what? They're going to fly into a missile turret. They're going to fly into a, an expanding Terran who has bunkers, marines, everything he needs to hold this off. And there's really not a lot that gaming can do here. Especially if, you know, taking damage on these mutas is something he cannot afford to do. He has no drones left. The mutalists are trying to buy some time here, trying to do some damage. He will force the cancel, it looks like, on this command center. But he's just going to GG there anyways. I don't even think Boxer needed to save that. And, yeah, that was going to be it. If you're wondering why he GG'd, well, it was 30 supply to 77. Worker count was 9 to 55. And he was behind in upgrades, behind in every single way possible. So the timing of Boxer was just really good. So that is going to be enough for him to advance into the bracket stage of this tournament. I will be having a bracket update video talking about the matchups and the excitement and all the stuff I'm looking forward to. I will be posting that fairly soon. So uh, it, it'll go after it'll go up after all of the most recent games that I've cast have been posted. 
And, uh, yeah, guys, I just wanted to let you know really quickly that I will be gone for most of this week. I have a live tournament I'm going to be doing, and or at least I'll be on set casting. I don't know if I can announce it or whatever, but uh, you guys will know soon enough. And then I also have another upcoming tournament that I'll be traveling to San Francisco for, which I'm really excited about that. So stay tuned, guys. I know there hasn't been as many videos on my channel, but there is going to be a lot of stuff around the internets that involves me. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.